main part. Main part, by the way, in a component is always your supporting member. So create it just like you would insert a system component. Column first, supporting beam first. I'll say next, pick my secondary parts and say finish. And then once I have this component created, I prefer to add it afterwards when I'm adding like a subcomponent or a nested component. So you can open this component up in the editor and then add a 141 or add a, a 146 or whatever shear connection you like. You can now embed that inside of it with all of the inherent intelligence that comes with it. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel to try to come up with a connection that will do X, Y, and Z while all I really need is this bend plate at the bottom. I love that shark fin it throws when bean cuts skew. <laughs> um, so, so that way, rather than trying to build a custom component, again, that's over complicated or takes care of too much, build custom components that just do the one thing you need. Just do that little additive that the, that the system component can't do. And then use the system components as much as you can for the rest of that stuff. I'm not going to get into it up here because then we, we would need another hour and that would be much calling. But it is possible to, inside the custom component, add some controls as well that will push through to the subcomponent. You can change its type, you can load different settings, you can add some controls to it without accessing the main dialog box of 141. That advanced training covers all of that stuff. So if that's an interest to you, you might want to check that out. All right. Um, 